So this episode of The Real Hot Boys of Houston said what it said, but what it said was a whole lot of bullshit. So the episode opens up with Sherrod and Dre meeting Braylon, which is the acting coach for August. And it seemed like almost immediately it was the battle of who gonna spill more tea about Ashton. Like even the AC unit in the back was like, girl, what, what y'all doing? No, 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 baby. What is you doing, baby? Like what? So the first thing they really start talking about is the fact that everybody in the group is blocked. And I'm putting up air quotes because I'm hearing two different stories. Y'all saying y'all blocked. Ashton saying he just turned the phone off. So, like, I, I mean, when you're blocked, don't you just get the voicemail? But when the phone is off, don't you just get the voicemail? Like, how would y'all know y'all were blocked? Because in, in text message land, when you text somebody... It just doesn't show delivered. Oh, but the, the message can still deliver if the phone is off. So if the message is never delivering, then yeah, you kind of blocked them, sis. I don't know, see, I don't know. That's the minutiae that we really need to get. Well, girl, I don't really care. I, I don't, like, you're on black now, bitch, so. So anyway, as everybody is talking about the fact that they are, well, not everybody. As Dre and Sherrod explain that they are blocked, Braylon then asks the question, are y'all really friends or are y'all trying to be? And girl, even though like you was proging and priding, kudos to you, Braylon, for that question alone because bitch, we've been wondering that since the words Real Hot Boys of Houston even entered the YouTube streets. Girl, we've been wanting to know. So the fact that you got into the minutiae within five minutes. So when Braylon asked that question, Dre then responds, we came into this trying to build a friendship but we really don't fuck with each other. And then from there, I don't know, I guess August was trying to figure out the dynamic between the friends. So he eventually got on, so what's going on between Ashton and Jordan? Girl, that was really, that was your destination. You was just taking all these other streets to get there. And what hurt the situation, but also helped the tea, was that little shimmy that Dre did to let us know, bitch, it's more than what we think. Or either it's exactly what we think. Now, Sherrod. I'm gonna get on you, Dre, but we gotta get on Sherrod first. This whole Jack situation, sis. Like, first of all, y'all may be good friends now. I would pray that you guys have learned from your mistakes and are working on your friendship with Ashton. But in the moment, the two of you bitches were some shitty-ass motherfucking friends and I wanted to be nowhere near you two. I don't give a fuck if me and my best friend just fist fought. I ain't got shit to say to your bitch ass about him. It, it just, ugh, the loyalty of it all, the lack of loyalty of it all, like it just hurt. Like, I, I'm i not Ashton, never even met the baby, but I felt like betrayed looking at it, like y'all, especially you Dre, because you've known him the longest since high school, since before this jack shit even came about, y'all were good Judy's. So the fact that you were even condoning this shit, let alone contributing, bitch. But Sherrod, like you... Todd, snatch that peacemaker shit the fuck off his goddamn subtext because no, no ma'am. He was disturbing the peace, not keeping it. No ma'am. Went into the whole Jack situation and was like, child, girl was catfish and she was a lot bigger than what she portrayed. Ooh, what, what does that have to do? With the dynamic of how y'all know each other. We met on Jack. She came over. We realized we was better off as friends. Kumbaya. You could have left all the fine details out of that shit. It, mm, at least for me, if I would have went that far and done the girls like that, the girls who I claim to be my good Judy, she would have known I was going to say all this before I would have even said it. I can promise you that. I would have called Ashley on the phone and said, bitch, I'm going to tell them the story of how we met. I'm meeting up with August and Braylon, and I'm sure they're going to ask. So I'm going to go ahead and tell them, I'm going to tell them all the details, bitch, okay? I'm going to tell a little way shit up in there, too, if that's okay. Like, just so, you know, because I, mm, and I think the reason why I was so betrayed by this is because 
years ago when I was dealing with my own self-consciousness and battling with my own depression and self-esteem and all of this, I had this insecure feeling that whenever I was not in the room, my friends were doing just that. And to see it happen, and even though Dre is mostly to blame because of the loyalty timeline, well, I, no, y'all are both to blame equally. I'm sorry. Because Sherrod, for you to sit in your confessional and say, I know what y'all doing. Y'all trying to get the tea. But you sitting your ass in the scene, giving it to them. If you hip to the game, outsmart them. Say without saying, bitch, I know what you getting at. And no, ma'am. How about this? He ain't blocked you, Braylon. Call him. And when he answer, I'm going to say it's me, Sherrod. And you can ask him all the questions that you asking me. Because I'm sure he know his life better than I do. You know? But that's what you do for a good Judy. The way y'all was treating Ashton was as if y'all don't fuck with the bitch at all. Dre, you called your best friend a compulsive liar. So people he don't even know. Y'all really make me want to get up and walk away, but y'all know the couch situation, so I just can't right now. Now for Dre. Dre, you did the absolute worst. At least Sherrod talked about a situation that he was involved in. You gave secondhand tea that was probably disclosed to you as a best friend. I don't know what Ashton did to you in that moment, but nothing other than killing my parents or fucking my man would warrant me to say something that detrimental. You know, like, you don't know what this group is going to do with that type of tea, whether it's true or not. You said it, so they trust you because you're one of his good Judies, one of his closest friends. And this is coming from you. So we trust that it's verified. This, uh, and again, bitch, I hope you're not getting a tea from me. You need to go watch this shit for yourself. But just to give a rundown, so Dre sits down and talks about the dynamic between Ashton and Jordan. Sherrod and his little shit was just thrown in there some type of way. I forgot. I think somebody asked about their dynamic as well, I'm sure. Because, baby, they was trying to get all the tea. Okay? And kudos to the goddamn window unit. Because sis wanted the tea, too. She was like, wait, wait, what you doing, baby? But once she realized that the tea was going to be spilled regardless, mama simmered down. She said, I need to hear this, too. I want me a little piece as well. What you say? So Dre gives the account for how Ashton and Jordan came about. Apparently, Archie, the person who was invited to his own apartment by way of Ashton in the first episode, hello, God, that's where it's YB, was into Jordan. Went and picked Jordan up from Dallas, brought him to Houston. Once Jordan got to Houston, Jordan realized that real girls do real things. And that's where it's L. Teddy. So Archie wasn't enough. The fun size top just wasn't going to cut it for little Miss Jordan. So she was getting her gumbo from Jordan, but she was getting her turkey neck from Ashton. And that's the word, girl. After she tried everybody in a group, she landed on Ashton, literally. And I think they threw Ken in there somewhere. I think they said something about the fact that Ken and Jordan fell out because they were really cool because Ken started calling Jordan London, which was the name he went by when he was an adult film star. So... And the reason why I say star is because a lot of bitches is talking about it, okay? And it ain't just members of the Justice League, hallelujah. Like, word has gotten around that mama was down with the OnlyFans and that she was in a relationship with somebody who I'm not gonna name. And, um, I've seen the footage. It's impressive. Oh, I need a manicure. So then we see Ashton and Jordan. Ashton is picking up Jordan from the airport and they are headed to Taco Tuesday. Now, before we get into the minute, well, I don't really want to talk about the car conversation because I didn't hear most of it. Bitch, I don't know what was worse, the angle of the camera or that fucking lint. First of all, why are we trying to get lint off of an undershirt? 
I can tell from the fabric of that life that no, that's a cotton undershirt. That's a Hanes undershirt. That's a Fruit of the Loom undershirt. Which typically means you're supposed to wear it under something. Those, those shirts don't, baby, they don't even keep their shape. You do one hug and your, your sleeve's like this. No, we not. Mm -mm. So why are we trying to get lint off of that? And you just came off the plane, bitch. Grab some out the suitcase. Throw her on. And shimmy me through the door. Which I think you did, but... Because I can't remember the scene. So, they arrive at Sherrod's house. Because Sherrod is hosting Taco Tuesday. First of all, I don't know if y'all noticed. But Ashton walked right past Sherrod into the apartment. And girl, that was a pretend phone call. Because I do it all the time when I don't want to be bothered with people. When nobody on that phone. But that was rude as fuck. Because everybody know how you supposed to do it, even if you're on the phone. It, it go a little something like this. Hey, girl, hey, girl, how you doing? Yeah. So anyway, girl, boom. You, as if the boy wasn't even standing there. And I'm like, bitch, I would have grabbed you by your collar and slung you out my motherfucking door. Let's try this shit again, because it's my motherfucking house. And I don't give a fuck who you mad at. My house, I pay bills. Bitch, if you ain't gonna greet nobody else, you gonna speak to the queen, bitch. So now it's game time. And you know what? Y'all love to play games, but y'all can never get to the game. I don't, girl, y'all start with the game, but at the end, it be like, girl, maybe y'all should not play games. Can we start with a prayer? Can we eat the tacos first, bitch? Because maybe once we on full stomachs, we ain't got the strength to fight, so we just sitting back and we chilling. Because, girl... I don't know if y'all was hungry. Y'all was mad at Ashton. I don't know what the reason was. But bitches was on 12. No. August was on 12. And why you block us? And he was like, bitch, I didn't. Yes, I left the group. Yes, I deactivated my account, which was probably a little extra. But I turned my phone off. I can do that because I'm grown. What's next? And August went to, oh, you being aggressive. Even Sharon said you being aggressive. Was this improv? Did Braylon say the next time you go around the group, I want you to, you know, pull a scene up out your ass, bitch, and I want you to really just serve it? Because the minutia of background has told me August had already prompted Ashton on this Taco Tuesday. Bitch, they've been talking shit about you. Bitch, be on guard, because, bitch, everybody mad because you blocked them. And then you become the very person that comes with the energy. You told him to be on guard. And that was an aggression. That was defensiveness. He was on guard like you. I don't know if the wig was too tight. I don't know if you was improv so you could take those notes back to Braylon. Because I maybe you still holding up this acting coach theory. But um, that girl, I was lost. Slow down. Because you are moving way too fast. And then the how did you meet Jordan shit? I'm new to the group and I'm hearing different stories. Well, none of these stories are your fucking business. I don't care if you're hearing a different story from every person in the group. Make up your own, bitch. Because why do you deserve to know my business? I'm, I'm, that's a, ooh, I'm there in my life. I really am, y'all. Like, I, when somebody said, what you doing with your life? Where you working? Did it, telling you all of this is going to do what for you? Are you gonna get some grant that I don't know about? Or is a loan gonna come through? Do you need information to plug in for me to be one of your resources and, and references? Like, I don't... Telling you my information does what for you other than just feed your motherfucking curiosity and your nosiness. Especially if I know you somebody that ain't gonna do well with the information. Now, if it's my mother, my friend, okay, I, I see. But if you just some rando, like, girl, oh, girl, give me the tea on this. We not there yet. I just brought you back into the group. You on a probationary period. I'm not telling you what happened. And apparently you already heard three different stories, so run with the one that seems the most likely. I, I just don't understand why that was a big issue for you, why you just had to know in front of everyone. You couldn't pull him to the side to ask that question? I just don't know, August. It was just your approach to the whole situation. You was just like, what well, I heard from Dre at Brain. It was just a lot. And I was just, 
really taken aback that you just felt like, it, and I, I believe Ashton even apologized, which I would have never done. He was like, if I hurt any of y'all feelings, I'm sorry. And well, I just don't know because I've known you. Know, I'm like, girl. But yeah, before you could even answer, Ashton, I think the episode ended. So we are left on a cliffhanger because we really don't know your explanation of how you know Jordan. We heard it from everybody else, but we have not heard it from you. So hopefully in the next episode, we will. And yeah. Y'all, that's what this episode was given. It gave what it gave, which was some bullshit. So I gave it what I had. Make sure you are liking, commenting, and subscribing, and that your notifications are on. Also, make sure you guys check out the Kitty Box every Sunday at 10 p.m. Central Standard Time. And even if you cannot catch the live premiere, bitch, it's on Spotify and Apple Podcasts and any other place that podcasts are streamed. So, girl, get your binge on. We talk about some good shit, me and YB. Make sure you are liking, commenting, and subscribing, and that the notifications are on, girl. Same place, same time.